to the Ghost of Parent Hall. My name's Simon. And I'm McKelly. Thank you for joining us for episode 203 of our chapter by chapter book review of A Song of Ice and Fire by George Martin. Today we'll be discussing chapter 59 of A Storm of Swords, that's Sansa 4. Probably the longest hiatus we've had, actually. I think there's 31 chapters since Sansa was last in the spotlight. Sansa who? Exactly. Is she related well, to Sansa, La- <laughs> Sansa Lannister. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Uh, anyway, as always, we're going to chat about the chapter and try not to spoil any future plot points for you. Hopefully, we're going to provide you some entertainment along the way. We'll summarize what happened, discuss our thoughts on it, provide some useful background, compare it to the television show, indulge in a little pedantry, and cover some relevant news and listener correspondence. By the way, there's quite a lot of background in this one. Oh, well, part of it is me explaining why I chose what I did. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. Uh, be sure to check out the show notes they provide some additional information about the characters and geography of this chapter how are you it's been a long time McKelly it has I had to remember how everything worked now we are oh, yeah. both who we claim to be as best yes, I can we tell are. we are <laughs> interlopers and imposters have been removed yes. from the scene and I think first we before we do anything else we need to thank Rob he did a great yeah. job standing in as his older brother much older yeah. brother as he put it uh huh yeah, yeah, he he made me laugh several times. I'd I'd heard the trombone story before, but it, I, I didn't. I I heard it before I heard it in the podcast. If you see what I mean, I heard it from him before I heard it in the podcast, and so I I actually put it in the notes for this one to tell it myself, and then I heard him <laughs> telling it. I was like, oh, okay, oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> yes, we got a few uh, comments in the Discord server about uh, people laughing out loud at that uh-huh. <laughs> a few spit takes i believe <laughs> <laughs> of all the things well the hobbies <laughs> for this person to have <laughs> oh well just, yes i just I, love you I, I love the idea of sophie's head just slowly drifting to the pillow and just as it hits the <laughs> pillow you gotta wah, wah. <laughs> 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 Oh, yes. Well, I had a good time with Rob. I mean, Rob and I had never really hung out before. I mean, that was, you know, the yeah. first time we'd ever really spent any time together. And I, I felt like we had a pretty good rapport. I, I... Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he's he's a lot like me. I mean, yes. just like, you yes. know, a lesser version in most ways. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he might d- dispute you on that, but uh, uh... I don't know. He publicly would. Privately, he would admit it. Oh, I see. He was recording from what appeared to be a closet, and um, he had a, he looked like he had a much better acoustic setup because he had towels all around him. Uh-huh. So, you know, it was probably deadening the uh, outside noise and any reverberations and such. I'm guessing you just mistook his laundry room for... Uh... Oh, for a closet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he had a very nice setup for uh, someone coming in on the fly like that. So thank you, Rob. Um, yeah. And so we, we've both had vacations since last we met. Right. We have. Now, you and I, it, it's been three weeks, I think, since we've had we've, any meaningful conversations. Yeah. Since we've been in town together, basically. Right. right? Yeah. I've, I've, I've been up to the mountains twice to avoid the heat, and it's worked very nicely for me. I'm sure it has. Mm-hmm. It's been very hot around here. Yes. And, I, and, uh, and we were supposed to record last weekend, but I, on my vacation, I managed to uh, come down with a bug that had me incredibly sick for many days. So You're not 100% yet, I can tell. I, I am not. I, I, am, I feel fine. My voice is at like 85%, but I've got this just lingering, what's become now a habitual cough. So... You know, full disclosure, there might be uh, moments where I burst out into coughing. We will try to remove those as best as possible. So um, my most recent trip, the, the, the one I've been on this week, was I, I just, a friend of a friend has a place in the mountains, which has which is really very, very nice. And um, they, they let us rent it for a reasonable price. And you can work from there because it has good Wi-Fi and things. So I, me and Carson and took the dogs and we went with a couple of friends and we, we stayed there for the week and it was it was lovely and they had a hot tub and uh we got in the hot tub on the first night and we splashed around and it was nice and then we closed the hot tub and it had straps to strap it down and my friend said well, should we strap it down i said oh we only need to do that if there's a storm coming now i said that without looking at the weather forecast <laughs> <laughs> that night at about 1 45 
was everybody's phone went off for a tornado warning. Oh no! Absolute pandemonium out there. I mean, like I, I it's they have a really nice sort of cabin thing with a really good view over the mountains, and I I staggered out of the bedroom and looked out of the windows, and it was just lightning constantly you couldn't see anything but lightning flashing just flash 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 it was crazy oh, no. and you saw a so, hot tub disc float flying through the air like a well, frisbee <laughs> well i weighed up the pros and cons and i went back to bed um and the next morning i discovered that my friend got up 10 minutes after me and he braved the weather uh... and went and put the straps on i was like I did not do that. That was, <laughs> that was too wild for me. But, uh, yes. but it was nice, actually. That, that cleared the air. And so we, that, after that, we got beautiful views across the mountains. And, All right. So it's, it's, the, it's the mountains of North Carolina, and they're very, very pretty. Yes, very much so. Yeah, we had, uh, we had some, some uh, weather down here as well. A lot of trees yeah, you, down. You, you texted me to put the fear of God into me. <laughs> well, you know, you've had a history of branches coming down in... Uh, inopportune yeah. locations so yeah. i wondered about you but stacy and i were walking the next morning and it came by very fast i was out yeah. I, I i got the garbage can from the road and was bringing it back in and in the process of me doing that it went from just like a, a normal day to like the end of the world and by, <laughs> by the end i was running to try and get back to <laughs> shelter before the world exploded and it didn't last very long but the next morning stacy and i were walking and there were trees down everywhere, and unfortunately, there was one big oak tree right across the roof of someone's house. Ouch. Yeah, so thankfully it wasn't yeah, me, but... Yeah, there's been some wild weather recently, that's for sure. Yeah. But, uh, so I mentioned on the Discord server that I had done a thing, and that I would tell everyone what I did. Uh, so I guess I better uh, live up to that promise. It was, uh, sure. so, so while we were on vacation, we... Um, we took a, a cruise, Royal Caribbean cruise, to the uh, Caribbean. Well, the cruises are available. Yes, yes. I, I get no kickback <laughs> from yeah. Royal Caribbean, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but it, if you do vacation, vacation with Marriott <laughs> Bonvoy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that one we do get a kickback on. <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, they they have different activities and stuff on, on uh, a cruise ship, and... Um, one of the things we did frequently was they had these trivia contests, and we did three. By the third one, you were invited to be the quiz master. <laughs> well, the third quiz, or the uh, trivia game, I guess, was uh, was uh, Game of Thrones trivia. Whoa. And, Here we go. And the... You know, the kids and Stacey are like, oh, my goodness, you're going to kill this. This is going to be Molly was like, this is going to be like if they had New Girl trivia for me. She loves the show New Girl. And I was like, all right, pump your brakes, everybody. Pump your brakes. Remember, my show is not on a game of on Game of Thrones It is on a song of ice and fire. I intentionally do not watch so that I can keep my book canon 100 percent. I'm going to speculate here that they heard you the way Charlie Brown hears the teacher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I was like, just, just relax. And, um, you know, so everybody, I was with nine other people, two other families. They, everybody decided to come watch me play this, uh, trivia game here. And I was like, Oh goodness, no pressure here. I am coming with my entourage, my, my Royal Kings guard behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and we took an entire corner of the, uh, of the air, you know, the little bar that it was being held in. And I was nervous because they, they changed Very. some things, you know, I, I, I'm nervous for you. <laughs> Uh, but you know, when, when the questions started flying, I went 20 for 20. So, uh, Oh, you I, did. I, I That's, did. Yes. And, and did you win? Were there others similar? Wouldn't you know I tied and? someone else got 20 out of 20. And so they, they just split, uh, they just gave us these little uh, Royal Caribbean medallions. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, I split with some guy. I I knew I had to get them all right because I didn't want to leave any chance that I didn't at least co-win this thing. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Did you did you mention the podcast to the guy? I wore my shirt. I wore my GOH shirt. <laughs> Clever. Um, but I didn't. the The guy. So you know that he 
the guy running the thing only had one little medallion, so he took me off. He gave the other guy the medallion because he got there up to the front first, and by the time I got up there, he's like, here, come with me, and he took me off to this other, you know, like, place where they keep other medallions and such. So I never actually got to interact with well, the, to uh, the, the guy, the guy. Who tied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it was cool. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, no one came up and asked for my uh, picture and said, I love your show. Or <laughs> well, congratulations. I'm, I'm, I'm glad it was you. I fear that I would have not won and I would have been embarrassed. I would have had to take my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it inside out. <laughs> inside out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, but you 18? watched the show at least. 18? Yeah, but that, <laughs> all that does is confuse me. Yeah. There were two questions that were different between you know the book and the show. One has to do with Bran and hasn't happened yet, so I can't bring it up. Oh my gosh, they both haven't come up yet. So I can't bring up... <laughs> okay <laughs> but you got them both right i got them both you know. right yes yeah. <laughs> so Actually, uh, you, yeah you, you uh, we've just edited it out because we realized it was a spoiler but you told me the brand question and actually the brand question could conceivably come true in the book too we don't know how the book's going to end so it's not necessarily a difference it's just an extrapolation yes it's a difference in wording it, oh. it, they 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 use two different terminologies between the book oh, and the show. Well, you better tell me what the actual answer was then, because I thought you were going to say something different. Well, congratulations, McKay. I'm proud of you. I really am. I, I mean, I, I was nervous as you were telling that story. I, was <laughs> like, oh, I really hope he wins. <laughs> I, I finished well in the middle of the pack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, did, actually... did, anyone on, did anyone on your team help you? No, they were completely useless. All... Nine other people, and they they were so impressed by how quickly I knew the answers because they had no idea. And and uh, what you how you grade your test, <laughs> your sheet that they give you is you trade it with the person next to you. Right. And I went to hand mine to the woman sitting next to me, and she was like, "Oh no, this is embarrassing. You don't want to grade this." I basically just wrote the questions that he was asking because I didn't know any answers. And I was like, why would you come to a Game of Thrones theme trivia if you don't know anything about the show? <laughs> so uh, I guess maybe she thought, oh, I'll figure it out as I go along from context clues. <laughs> She'd heard there was some pro who'd be there and it would be worth yeah, watching. Right, yeah. yes. It'd be so worth the, grading his paper. There was a, a very sweet lady on the other side of my entourage who um i traded with and uh, she and i had been talking before and after she was she was a a fan of the game of thrones she didn't know about our show so i introduced her to our show so maybe she's listening at this point i believe you started something here mckelly i think there's going to be a ghost of harrenhal cruise before too long yes that that's that's what we we've know we'll, we'll know we've made it by then if we have our yeah, own yeah. cruise much harder quiz questions Yes, no we, twenty, out, no twenty out of twenty on our quiz questions. Right, that's not that would yeah. not be possible because we'll just delve yeah. into our own lives. Although people might actually get those right as well. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. All right, we have shot the breeze. We have breeze has been shot. So let us get down to business. How did we leave Sansa Stark last time? Sansa had the POV. It was her marriage to Tyrion, but of course we've seen her a couple of times since then, not being raped by her husband continuing to visit the godswood piously but again we're not seeing her pov so we're just presuming that that was to keep rendezvousing with her would-be rescuer sedantus hollard and learning of her brother and mother's death at the once removed hands of her new in-laws ouch uh Miguel, why don't we give the summary of this one all right sansa wakes from a pleasant dream of her family and lady in winterfell she rises to the reality she knew awaited her and girds her loins to face the day Tyrion, as is his wont, has risen before her. She shares a view of clouds that look like a castle with her new servants, Brella and Shay, who have prepared a bath for her. A big day. Joffrey and Marjorie are to be wed. Sansa bathes while thinking about the day. Wedding at noon in Baelor Sept, breakfast before and a feast in the evening. Tyrion and Podrick arrive while she's dressing. She cajoles her husband into a clean doublet for the breakfast. He's drinking already. Tyrion and Pod hevel themselves. By the way, that, that's a made-up word. So for the non-English speakers, that's not really a word. But dishevel means oh, to become I means see. to become unruly in dress and appearance. So as a joke, hevel is the opposite of dishevel. Uh -huh. I like a, it. It's just 
Just a wordy joke. Uh, Sansa's pleased with the outcome. Podrick is so timid he cannot look at her. She had been wary of him because he's a pain. A uh, pain with a Y. Right. Um, I mean, I'd be wary of him if he was a pain with an I too, but <laughs> specifically because he's a pain with a Y. Uh, but she's now learned that he was far more afraid of her. In the Queen's ballroom, the breakfast is sumptuous. Then Joffrey, not Marjorie, she's breaking her fast elsewhere, receives gifts. From his mother, the bride cloak that she used, and her mother before that. It's a little ratty in the opinion of the always keen eye for needlework Sansa. A bow and arrow from Jalabarzo, riding boots from the Stokeworths, a jousting saddle from Uncle Kevin, a gold scorpion brooch from the Martells, and so on and so forth. Uh, Tyrion and Sansa give a book, Kate's History of the Four Kings, one of the remaining originals in Kate's own hand. Uncle Kevin recommends it to all kings. Joffrey pushes it aside, disinterested. He accuses Tyrion of reading too much and failing to impregnate Sansa as a result. He and the court laugh. He offers to do the job for Tyrion, the making a baby, that is, not the reading. Sure, uh, sure. Tyrion stays quiet for once. Mace Tyrell proffers a golden chalice. The seven faces show the sigils of the seven great houses. Joffrey thinks the direwolf needs to be replaced by a squid. The last is a gift from Tywin, a magnificent Valyrian steel sword. Joffrey calls for names and settles on Widow's Whale. To demonstrate its sharpness and his bravery, he butchers Tyrion's book. Garland Tyrell observes how rare the book was, but Joffrey ignores and demands a new gift from Tyrion and Sansa. Tyrion suggests a Valyrian steel dagger as an accompaniment to the sword. Joffrey gives Tyrion a sharp look, but agrees that that would be fitting. The breakfast concludes, the Martells, Oberyn and his paramour Ilaria, fall in beside Tyrion and Sansa. Oberyn mourns the loss of the book. He'd seen one copy in the Citadel, wondrous illustrations, but too kind to Viserys in his opinion. Tyrion disagrees. Viserys ruled as hand while Daron warred and Baelor prayed. Rumours that he poisoned his own nephew to gain the throne seem entirely forgivable to Tyrion. Sansa's shocked. She thought Baelor was a great king. He walked the bone way to bring peace to Dorne without being bitten by snakes. Oberyn has thoughts. The Dornish believe Baylor was bitten many times, and the venom drove him mad. But there are no snakes in King's Landing, so what happened to Joffrey? That's Oberyn's question, not mine, although I, I fully <laughs> support his line of questioning there. Tyrion and Sansa take their leave and retire to their litter, drawing the curtains against the world. Tyrion asks if Joffrey quarrelled with Bran while they were in Winterfell. Sansa doubts it. He presses her on what happened to Bran in Winterfell. Assuming he means the fall, Sansa says that they were, they were always afraid of it and that it was inevitable one day. Tyrion mentions that Catelyn once accused him of being involved in something to do with Bran. He doesn't give details, but denies any wrongdoing and assures Sansa that he means her no harm either. She thanks him, but doesn't know what else he's looking for. He offers to tell her the details of Rob and Catelyn's death, but she refuses. He understands that. They both have enough bad dreams already. Yes. So, yeah, you mentioned right at the top of the show that it's been a while since we've had a Sansa POV. Oh, yeah. And I went digging. And our Sansa 3, our episode, came out on January 10th of this year. So... It was probably Ooh, the probably the first episode that we recorded of 2023, and we are now yeah. in mid, heading toward late August. Yeah, so yeah. amazing! It's I, I had to kind of refresh myself on what that chapter was about because it's been <laughs> so long. <laughs> I, I relied on memory, so of course good. I assumed yeah, you yeah. did. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, they mention it's a, it's a new year, so happy new year! Um, right, happy three, new year to you! It and it's and it's an anniversary. It's three hundred years since Egan's conquering. So uh, we'll take a moment here. How do we rate the Targaryen dynasty? I uh, my first instinct was B minus. That's what I went for. Uh -huh. And I'll just yeah. I'll justify it if you want, but you can you can chime in first if you prefer. Well, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's. I mean, yeah. Maybe C plus. I mean, there's okay. there's been some good rulers. Jaehaerys the first, Aegon the fifth. In the background, we'll hear about a an underrated king who uh, you know had good potential, just didn't have the ability to see it through. And of course, we've had some 
horrible kings such as yeah. Mad King Ares and Aegon the Fourth, and of course we've had a misunderstood king. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, he wasn't all good, I admit it. But but yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I mean, obviously there's been some good ones. I, I I don't think as a dynasty it's been any different than sort of other kings of Westeros or. or other kings historically in different contexts sure there's some good some bad some repressive in the targaryen's case there do appear to be a slightly above average number of psychotics yes um, which which is unfortunate but sometimes their worst traits and instincts can be curbed for example Ares, right Ares was prevented from doing some of the worst things he wanted to do you know right but yes. it did cost jamie his reputation to do that but I will say, the more I thought about it, the more I thought there's shameful lack of scientific advancement. Imagine what we here managed to do between 1723 and 2023. Right. You know, imagine yes. the scientific advancements we managed in that period. Uh, what have they managed? You know, they have they have the citadel. Are they learning anything new? Yeah. It feels like that's a, the whole right. thing is just stagnated. Uh, and failure to distribute wealth. I mean, 95% of the people that don't feature in this book live from hand to mouth, you know, right. Right. The feudal lords live high on the hog and churn up young lives in pointless wars yes. all the time. So I'm revising down C minus. Yep. You make some solid points there. Definitely. Uh, lack of advancement in multiple ways. Now, now we will learn that some Kings tried to uh, advance some things, uh, some rules, some laws in uh, Westeros, but I think ultimately the lords and kings' primary focus was keeping themselves in power. Yeah, 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 yeah. I th I think sort of feudalism generally leads to stagnation, yes. you know. Right, and, right. And and in some ways, that's why the Targaryen reign is a bit of a lost opportunity because they brought it together in a way they hadn't been together for a long time prior to that and that gave the opportunity that sort of like centralization of power right. diminishment of power in the feudal lords did give an opportunity for the rise of education and the universities which didn't really happen and i think that's that's just a it's a blanket complaint rather than an individual king complaint i think some have been good bad or indifferent but all of those institutional things should have should have been pushed up generally during this time yeah maybe they should have more than one facility of learning you know yeah. more than just yeah. the citadel in old town yeah yeah so anyway this chapter it picks up right where Tyrion seven because we, we bounced straight from a Tyrion to sansa right so we we went right from, yeah yeah uh so sansa wakes to think as usual Tyrion's up before me but what we know that he's uh uh, not actually been in the bed. He's been with Shay. Um, yeah, and when he when his chapter started, when he was leaving the bedchamber, he noticed that she was dreaming, and he wondered what she was dreaming about. Oh, that's right. And then she this was chapter, a nice dream. Yeah. yes, begins with her thinking about what she had just been dreaming about. So there was some symmetry there. Yeah, yeah, and Tyrion has managed to condition Sansa to see those absences as normal, which is helping him keep his uh, affair going. And Maybe particularly now it's going to become a little bit easier because Shay is presumably, as Sansa's handmaiden, not too far away. Right. Yeah, you know, she she thinks that Tyrion's not a good sleeper and often up before down, dawn, which, you know, chances are he might not be a good sleeper. Yeah. He's got plenty of stressors. I believe we do know that he's not a very good sleeper, but we also know that there's other things that keep him up at night. Uh -huh. It's... It is a woeful time for Sansa, of course, with Winterfell fallen, married to, you know, the enemy and, and of the enemy, the one that she sees as the, as a monster. Yes. And in and in to her knowledge, every member of her family is dead. Yes. We know that Arya, Bran, Rickon remain and John, but Sansa often discounted him, but she yeah. thinks they're all gone. Yeah. Yeah. And we also get confirmation in this chapter. We're based on what you're just referencing there, that Tyrion has not told Sansa the news about Arya being with Roose Bolton. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. We don't get any indication as to why, because Sansa doesn't know that Tyrion knows this information. Well, I'll take a speculation. He doesn't believe it. That's, that is 
definitely an option. He doesn't believe it. Why tell your wife something that's going to prove to be not, you know, give her a false hope? You know, she's already right. miserable. It'd be nice to give her some hope, but if you don't believe it yourself, then. Right. Yeah. I guess you'd just be, you think you'd be setting her up for more hardship. More hardship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and you mentioned John. And yeah, Sansa thinks of her whole family being gone and her being the only one left. And she clearly leaves John out. And you just get, you've always gotten the feeling that. Sansa has been very clearly influenced by her mother uh-huh. when it comes to John. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I yeah. mean, you know what, to a certain extent, you know, even if she was very fond of him, like Arya was, it wouldn't make any difference. He's a, he's a member of the Night's Watch now. She's never going to see him again, unless she happens yeah. to go to the wall one day, but that seems unlikely. Yeah, I guess it would, there just might be some comfort knowing there's one person out True. there. True, who, true, true, true. You know, is your relative who's known you since yeah. birth and, and all yeah. that. Because she even thinks Septim Ordain is gone, you know, and Septim Ordain is someone that had pr- likely known her since birth. So, uh, but, you know, there's a line in this very early on, I think it might be the second paragraph, where Sansa thinks to herself that her torment would soon be ended one way or the other. And... I, I read over it a few try, times trying to see if there was a clear reference to what she's referring to. And I, I I couldn't find a clear reference to what she means by her torment would soon be ended one way or the other. And I okay. wondered, yes, you've got, a, you've got a thought? I got a thought. I mean, so this is off the cuff. It might steal your thunder. It might be completely different. But <laughs> we don't know what she's been plotting with Sedantus Holland. We right, know she's right. been meeting with him. But maybe... She believes that the culmination of that plan is at hand. Yes, I agree. Uh, because she, we've we've seen their earlier conversations, and he kept telling her, "The wedding day, there will be chaos on the wedding day. Oh, That's right. the day that we you will slip away." But last we had heard, the plan was called off. So it seems like the we had speculated that she was going to the gods would either in hopes of rekindling the plan, or actually re kindling the plan it seems like at least she thinks the plan is back on yeah 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 that's that's how i interpreted that yeah Uh, so before her bath um she she goes outside and looks at the clouds and there's a pretty cloud i I like to look at clouds and look for shapes and clouds and she sees a, a castle and she calls out brella and shay her servants who've been uh newly appointed um, believed to now be loyalists, not working for Cersei. Right. Um, and Shay and Brella have an interesting, you know, she, she wants, Sansa wants their opinion on the shape of the cloud and they, they all see the castle, but Shay sees it as glinting in gold and a golden castle. But Brella sees it as crumbling. So, yes. uh, interesting sort of like, sort of optimist pessimist view there but my yeah, question like, is like a rorschach is, test or, or yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> who, who whose portent is it these things are always portentous for who is this is it is it for sansa is she going to live in a golden castle is she going to live in a crumbling castle or is it for shay because shay's out there looking at this as well and she through her rose tinted shay glasses sees this beautiful golden castle but the realist, Brella, sees it as crumbling. And that feels like it might be talking about Shay's life and how yes, right. it's, it's smoke and mirrors. Yeah, I could definitely see that. She, uh, Sansa, at the end of this chapter, when Oberyn and Ilaria are walking with Sansa and Tyrion, she recalls that Shay had told Sansa that Ilaria was, I think as she put it, almost a whore when uh, Oberyn found her, and now she's near a princess. And, and you wonder if Shay might be having similar thoughts of uh, hitching her wagon to Tyrion and being, you know, be- becoming an Ilaria uh, San type character. In, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And we do get the outward why, like you said, of the reason that Tyrion brought Shay into Sansa's service is because uh, all the previous hand women were spies, which I certainly think is likely what yes. uh, Tyrion told her. But that's that's the story we get as to why Shay and 
Brella were brought in. So, and you know, Rob and I had wondered in the last Tyrion chapter uh, how Shay would handle being around Sansa, and and now we get a little snippet here, just like one sentence where Sansa's thinking about how Shay does her job dutifully, but gives the most insolent side glances sometimes. So, uh, you know, we wondered if there might be some jealousy on Shay's part, and possibly that's what we're seeing there. Yes, this this is hard for me to unpack from the television show, because on the television show, Shay very rapidly loses her heart to Sansa. Oh, okay. He, he wants to hate her because she's the rival and right. she's married to her love, but she can't help but feel bad for the girl and that she wants to protect her and you know okay. and i think i think that's not wildly different i think she right. is she is who she is you know she's she's he's going to give you the side eye if you ask her to do something she doesn't want to do no question about it but she's also not totally stupid she's uh she's yes. going to play the part yeah i think yeah i think you're right about all that and i think the show got it right yeah yeah uh one thing that uh, kind of dawns on Sansa as she's getting ready for this breakfast with the Lannisters is that she's a Lannister now. She, they made her a Lannister. They made me a Lannister is her, um, is her thought. Yeah. And surely that will be hard to wrap her head around and also painful to accept being that it's the house that pretty much caused the demise of her entire family. Yeah. I mean, it's the kind of thing you might hold a grudge over. Yes. If yes. you were so inclined. Uh, and but, I, well, go on. I, I can't help but think that she might also be thinking about what might have been if if she was at the other breakfast with Marjorie and about to be a, a Tyrell, about to marry Willis Tyrell, you know, she'd still have the hardship of the loss of her family, but at least she'd have the possibility of a new loving family and a, a spouse that she expects that she can you know, fully embrace. Yeah, but I'm I'm always of the opinion that those Tyrells are just uh what is it? Roses have always have thorns or something like that. <laughs> right. They are certainly better at the PR game than the Lannisters. They are. That's, that's not hard. <laughs> no, but, it's really not. But she needs to notice the fact that her her husband is actually of a like mind to her. You know, well actually right. I'm not even I'm not even sure that's true. I think he's actually more decent than Sansa in many ways. Sansa to be fair, she's still a child, but yes, yes. Sansa, I don't think would notice the opulence of the feast while the people are starving, but Tyrion does. He and does comments yes. on it and thinks the whole thing is absurd, you know. Yeah, and yet the public hates him the most. It seems. Yeah, yeah. They had to shut the curtains of the litter to avoid dung being thrown at the litter when they when the small folk realized that Tyrion was inside which is is a shame because he's really the only one doing anything having done anything to either try and help them or think about them from the Lannister yeah. side so uh the main sort of event at the breakfast is the giving of gifts so uh Joffrey gets the the wife's cloak, which you put on the shoulders of your wife during the ceremony, and it was the one that Robert gave to Cersei, and before that, that Tywin gave to Joanna. So yeah. it must have been re embroidered, right? Because the cloak that Tywin would have used to put around Joanna would have been the Lannister sigil on it. I would, I would imagine. And then when Robert put it around Cersei, it would have had the Baratheon sigil on it so they must re-embroider yeah. as need be yeah yeah but that's interesting actually because then it, it would come he, it would by default here have both baratheon and uh lannister oh. sigils on it which is very much in keeping with how they're portraying joffrey right yes, yes. uh portraying in at the uh, at the very loosest end of being a baratheon because he's exactly. always wearing all red you know <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. uh so Joffrey's destruction of the book is totally within our expectations of him. It's an unforgivable yep, yep. desecration, given that there are oh, only yeah. four copies of this book and he's destroying one just for the heck of it. Uh, particularly, I think, I mean, the fact that he destroys T T uh, Tyrion's gift is just the animosity between the two of them. But coming on the fact that his great uncle, I, I was referring to him as Uncle Kevin, but technically he's his great uncle, Kevin. Right. Yeah. Uh, his proclamation that the book should be read by every king 
it just like well okay totally you're not discounted. only offending Tyrion you're offending Kevin too you know yes yes I will give Joffrey props for his one liner though because when uh, <laughs> Garland Tyrell says there were only four copies of this book in existence well now there's three <laughs> was quite funny yeah that's uh, it's rare for Joff to have a a witty to do anything comeback. Yes, yes anything <laughs> that isn't awful but yeah. uh, and props to Garland Tyrell himself for saying it I do sometimes Absolutely. wonder yeah. if if I can't tell if the Tyrells are just not aware of how bad he is or if they're so secure in their position that they don't care. Yes, that is definitely something that is, uh, it's curious what's going through their mind because as you said, he acts like a petulant fool in front of all in attendance to the point where at the end of this chapter, Oberyn Martell thinks Joff deranged right. <laughs> like he'd been yes. bitten by a bunch of snakes. <laughs> So you'd have to think Joff's behavior has setting off alarm bells for everybody, including the Tyrells. And, you know, like you mentioned, Garland speaks up and says something. So clearly he's noticing, oh, he just destroyed you know, one of the precious uh, artifacts in our, in our entire realm here. And you'd have to think that's concerning uh, as Marjorie's future husband. And I think if I'm remembering correctly, at that breakfast with Sansa, where Sansa met uh, Lady Olena, Marjorie's grandmother, she felt that Mace was so focused on marrying Marjorie off to a king that he's overlooking some major red flags. Right. And this that this behavior must be yeah. feels like it'd be a pretty glaring red flag for a father-in-law. The other thing is Garland and Joffrey could be tight. And actually, it was just a setup line for the comeback. You know, and, and after, after he said it, they fist bumped. Yes, know? it might be that. You know, but it's also not just the Tyrells that that have to be noticing this. Uh, Tywin's Tywin doesn't say anything about any of his, you know, his behavior here in this chapter. And you know, he last we'll come year back to chapter. that. We'll come back to that when we talk about the television show because the television show is quite interesting in this very moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just thought, you know, I, Tywin's got to notice this behavior, and I wonder if it's speeding up this sharp lesson that he is planning yeah. for Joffrey. And, you know, one thing Joffrey brings up about this book, he says, oh, my father never had time for books. And, uh, you know, it made me think that, I wonder if Joffrey has begun to rewrite Robert in his head now that Robert's gone. You know, the man went from absent father to this man that he admires and uh, feels worthy of uh, of following in his footsteps. Yeah. Remember last Tywin, Tyrion chapter, Joff told Tywin that his father won the war while Tywin hid under Casterly Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's funny, of course, is because of our very strong suspicions of Joffrey's parentage, is the sort of like the double meaning of all this, you know, sort of like Jamie too doesn't read things. And right. Jamie in some ways won the war. Right, that's true. Yeah. Yes, there is a two pronged uh, situation yeah. there. Yeah, I just wonder if Robert is a safe space now in yeah. Joffrey's mind, you know, no longer the scary drunk who sometimes beat him. It's, he's just a memory to rewrite as needed, which is kind of a new development because way back in Sansa 1 of A Clash of Kings, when Tyrion arrived at the Red Keep during Joffrey's name day uh -huh. uh, tournament, yeah, Tyrion yeah. Expre expressed his condolences to both Joff and Sansa about, ultimately, about the death of both of their fathers. And Joff didn't know what in the world he was having condolences <laughs> expressed to him for. He had to be reminded by Tyrion that his father died. So, you know, maybe it's a now that I'm king and, you know, now now that this guy's gone, I can admire him and look up to him more and rewrite what he actually was. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a common thing when a, a child loses a parent is to sort of like burnish their reputation in memory. Right. You know? and yes. It's just a particularly extreme case here because I think he Robert was a terrible father. And, oh yes, right. And it but it is actually it's it's sort of humanizing to Joffrey that he is doing that, to be honest, because thinking well of others 
even dead others is 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 better than what I actually think Joffrey gets up to. I think he thinks ill of everyone. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. true. Yeah, you know, there's one thing. One thing when things start to get heated between Joff and Tyrion, Sansa fears that Tyrion might retort and setting off an unpleasant face off like at her wedding feast. And I remembered that there was some sort of unpleasantness between Joff and Tyrion, but I couldn't remember exactly the specifics since it was now eight months ago. So mm -hmm. I, I went back and looked and it was it was at the start of the betting ceremony. Joffrey wanted to strip Sansa and, and Tyrion read the fear in Sansa's face and said there would be no betting and Joff protested and Thir uh, Tyrion threatened to geld Joff. Yes. And then Tywin stepped in and Tyrion apologized and said it was just a joke I took too far. And, you know, so that's the that's the mess that she was uh, worried about something like that happening again. Yeah. And then one last comment about the book. It was a it was a really well pitched gift by Tyrion because it was it was a beautiful gift. It was valuable. It was worthy of a king. And of course, it was a red flag to the idiot that is Joffrey. And yeah. so. Uh, <laughs> You're right. Uh, right. It was like a red flag to a bull. It was just exactly, it was just meant yeah. to set him Come off, on. no doubt. Come on, <laughs> so the suggested replacement is the famed, fabled Valyrian steel dagger that was used in the assassination attempt on Bran's life. I'm lost as to why jo Joffrey should react, and you're gonna have to help me here because Tyrion sees the reaction and then pieces together that Joffrey was involved in that assassination. But why the hell would Joffrey try to assassinate Bran? Help me, McKelly. I've forgotten. This is question number twenty-one on the quiz. <laughs> Well, so, yeah, Tyrion's responding to two comments that Joff makes. Adam Marbrand says, but Valerian still is very sharp. Be careful with that. And Joff responds. Says, I know. Yes. I remember. I'm no stranger to I'm Valerian Steel. I'm no stranger. Steel. That's right. Yeah. So those two comments, plus the, as you mentioned in the summary, the sharp look, sharp look. that yeah. Joffrey gives Tyrion when Tyrion mentions, how about I get you a, a Valerian Steel dagger to to go with your valerian steel sword and perfectly describes that dagger a and then right before joffrey starts talking he says you and then he pauses and then goes on about yes do that i want that but i, I want it to have a more ornate handle handle yeah yeah so it's not a great deal of context clues to make assumptions on but maybe it's enough to ignite a smark help me here though has there been previous clues as to joffrey's involvement in that assassination no not that i've that's, picked up on right that's what i thought it's, it seems out of the blue and also i mean look i can certainly see that the sharp look might make you think and you're right the comment about not being a stranger to valyrian steel that's two things that maybe would say, hmm, interesting. Joffrey knows more about this dagger than he's letting on. But to lead to the thing that, that a 12-year-old would try to assassinate a crippled boy when that 12-year-old, to the best of our knowledge, has no reason to want that child dead. Right. That the 12-year-old's parents do. Right. Definitely. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely not a lot to leap to this conclusion. Right, but the thing but is, that's fine. That's fine for us. But Tyrion is leaping to it. There's yes. no question. Tyrion is leaping to that conclusion. And, and, yeah, because he follows up later in the litter exactly. when he starts asking Sansa if Joff quarreled with Bran. So it's clearly he's considering the possibility, but he's not. He's not considering the possibility that Joff is lying just to look cool saying, Oh, I know all about Valerian right. steel. You know, the, that's as, as very mo more likely that that's what he's doing. Yes. than Occam's <laughs> razor says that that's what Joffrey meant. Right. He was bragging. So, yeah. But look, we, we could, we should probably put a pin in this topic for now, because as we'll learn at the very end of this episode, uh, next week is a Tyrion chapter and I have it on pretty good authority. We might get his internal thoughts on Lovely. his suspicion right, so good. we'll discuss it come. next week in more detail more to come all right so tywin's gift is one of the two valyrian steel swords that tywin had tobo mott forge presumably from ice though i don't think that's been made crystal clear to us yet right and, and when i say not. ice i mean the sword not from not frozen water that frozen water silly. <laughs> right <laughs> um, Tyrion saw those swords back in Tyrion four um 
question for you. Do you think this is the larger or the smaller of the two swords? From Joffrey's rank, he should presumably get the larger. But if the other sword is intended for Jaime, I'd be tempted to give Joffrey the smaller. But in this chapter, it is called a long sword. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I, I went back into Tyrion 4 to read that, uh, you know, how that all went down. And Jaime's sword is described as thicker, heavier, half an inch wider and three inches longer than Joff's oh, sword. So it okay. is the bigger sword. Okay, I see. The, 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 the one Joffrey's been given is the smaller of the two. Okay. Yes. And you're right. We still don't know where so much Valerian steel came from. But yes, we have conjectured that there was a very large Valerian steel sword. Right. Um, just hanging around on the back of right. Sir Ilium Payne. So, yeah. Uh, you know... One thing that struck me in this chapter is that Tywin didn't keep a sword for himself. He, yeah, he gave a sword to his grandson and a sword to his son. And the more I think about it, Tywin doesn't seek a great deal of limelight for himself. It's more about limelight for the house. Yes. You know, that that's that's his primary focus, house overall, the the image and the power of the house. So, but, but that's a good point because the, both of those swords could pass outside House Lannister as a result of this. I mean, Jamie is a Kingsguard and so not going to have issue. And Joffrey is technically a Baratheon. Yeah, theoretically, one or both could give their swords away, I guess, you know. Yeah, they, I suppose, I suppose the expectation would be that when Jamie passes away, the sword would pass down to a Lannister somewhere. Yes, you would think. But so. yeah, you're right. It, it's interesting that he didn't make sure one of them was firmly in the house. Right, sent directly to Casterly Rock exactly, to be mounted yeah. Yeah, yeah. in their great room there. Yeah. yeah. So the the sword gets named Widow's Wail by a uh, consensus from shouting out from the crowd. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a cool name. I kind of like it. I mean, especially for someone like Joffrey, you know, sort of like. Yeah, I'm not surprised he gravitated toward a negative. No, of course, yeah. Not not you know. edge of justice or something like that. Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I if I was in the audience, I would have been sorely tempted to shout out something a little bit more on point, something like <laughs> a hole's sword or child <laughs> of incest's stolen blade. Uh, oh. Realistically, I wouldn't. I talk about no, it. No, yeah, that I'm might not no have gone very Tyrell. well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was Garland Tyrell that shouted out Widow's Wail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, another fist bump. <laughs> yes. Yes. Planned it ahead of time. <laughs> so when they get to the uh when they get to the litter, they shut the curtains and despite it being a beautiful day, and like you said, it's because Tyrion's afraid of attack from the small folk because he's in it. It's, it's yes, an unfortunate is... life he leads. Yep. Uh you know. He leans into that monkey demon thing a bit too much that the uh, yeah the the person was uh, you know spouting about when he was uh, driving past that uh, that one chapter ages ago. He he just accepts the bad reputation, and, and he he does things like he openly burned the structures leaning against the outside of the wall before yeah. the battle because he thought it was too much of a liability, which he's right. Yeah, but. Maybe don't be the one that's out there pointing at things, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah just issue the broad command and stay right. on the side. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. So the chapter ends with uh, some good insight into Sansa being clueless as to what Tyrion actually wants. I mean, I think I think on some levels, Sansa is old enough to know what Tyrion wants sexually. Yes, but right, his not pressing that has has not. M- she is not concluded from that that he is a chivalrous and kind husband who wants her to be happy and to wait to want him. It's it's confused her more. It's made yeah, her it's yeah. sort of like discombobulated her about well what are his motivations and she it's like there's a there's a closed door in her mind towards the the correct answer which is Tyrion wants to be her friend. Right. She can't even imagine that one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, if we had seen her through Tyrion's POV for a while now and wondered what's going on in her head. So it has been really helpful to finally get into her head and see what she's thinking. Because last time we were in her head was at her wedding. So we've had eight months of marriage as far as our 
our timeline goes here in our <laughs> show to wonder what's she thinking about all this and and you know something rob said last week that i i think rings true is uh she's still a young girl she you know she's still caught up in looks and gallantry and you know the those are things that Tyrion's not going to be able to provide. So yeah. she's she's disappointed and she doesn't know what, like you said, she doesn't know what to make of him. At one point, she can feel that he is wanting something from her, like a starving child, but she doesn't have, she doesn't know what to give him to, yeah. to yeah. make him content. But see, what she needs to do is, is lower her own barriers. She's got to stop just being polite and formal and accommodating to him. And actually talk to him as an equal. Right. He is not. I mean, that's the thing. In her mind, she, he's the enemy. She can't get past that. But I think he isn't. I think if she were to talk to him freely, she would discover that he is a kindred spirit and actually yes. wants the best for her. Yeah. I, I just don't think she's reached a level of maturity mm. to be able to recognize that yet. All right. Do you have some background for us? I do have some background. I'm uh, going to take. I'm going to take a nap here. This is a big old background. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give a bit more info on the Viserys that Tyrion and Oberyn debate. Now Oberyn thinks that Kaith was too kind to Viserys, and Tyrion thinks the author scants the man. Well, you've probably figured out by now that it's not Danny's brother Viserys. That is Thank the uh, God. the the man up for debate here. He had been Viserys the third had he made it to the Iron Throne. Yeah, no, no debate now, on that guy. Right. I've got to be a bit careful these days because this content is directly related to House of the Dragon. So, and we have talked in the past about House of the Dragon and Viserys' role was mentioned. However, I'm kind of hoping many of you are listening about as well as Simon is right now and have forgotten any of the spoilers I laid out. I'm just making a shopping list. (laughs) So the man in question is Viserys II, who is actually the grandson of Viserys I. This Viserys was the second son of Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen and her uncle Prince Daemon Targaryen. Now, I really don't want to go into the details on his fate in Dance of the Dragon, so I'm going to skip ahead. He was Hand of the King to three kings, two of which get a reference here in this chapter. Darren I and Baylor I were both his brother's sons. And as Tyrion points out, many felt that Viserys was the one who truly ruled the realm while his nephews sat the throne. So King Darren warred with Dorne and ultimately brought the kingdom into the realm forcibly. However, the arrangement didn't last very long, and the young king eventually died fighting the Dornish. Actually, the kids were reading of Darren when Davis arrived for his lesson with Maester Pylos. Uh, Darren's younger brother, Baylor, was next to sit the Iron Throne. and Like they discuss in this chapter, he was next-level pious. You might recall he was the king who had his sisters locked in the Maiden Vault to keep them pure. Now, some of Baylor's pet projects included outlawing prostitution in King's Landing. Probably saw that one coming. Uh, Replacing messenger ravens with messenger pigeons. Hmm. Super important. Providing tax breaks to lords who put their daughters in chastity belts. And fasting. Oh, did he fast. He fasted for everything. In fact, Tyrion mentioned it was a fast that killed him. He died on the 41st day of that fast. Although, as Oberon points out, there's also rumors that Baylor was poisoned by Viserys. Mm -hmm. So you can see why Tyrion thinks that Viserys should get more credit. Both kings were a bit distracted from the day-to-day ruling of the realm. Uh, Ultimately, Viserys did become the 10th Targaryen king with the death of Baylor. Even then there was controversy, as some thought the rule should have gone to his niece, Dana. Uh, and Viserys did have a short rule. It was much longer than the two weeks that Oberyn gave him credit for. However, uh, in that short time, he implemented some positive rules, which I was mentioning at the beginning of our discussion, that there was a king, there, when we were talking about kings, that uh, did some positive things. Uh, He did things such as issuing reforms of the royal household and its functions, establishing a new royal mint, making efforts to increase trade across the narrow sea, 
and making positive revisions to the already progressive code of laws established by the old king Jaehaerys I. Actually, it's believed that Viserys had it in him to be another Jaehaerys the Wise, as he was just as wise and shrewd. Unfortunately, a sudden illness led to Viserys' death in 172 AC. Uh, he also has the unfortunate distinction of being the father of one of the worst kings of all time, Aegon IV, also known as Aegon the Unworthy, who is the third king in Kaith's book, Darren being the Darren the second being the fourth king. You know, the book is called The Lives of Four Kings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some actually believe it was Aegon the Fourth, who is Viserys' son, who poisoned his father and led to Viserys' death. I'll say I'm more suspicious of that poisoning than the other one you mentioned, because right. if you're fasting, it's very difficult to poison you because... It right. is. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if you fast for 41 days, you might well die. Yes. Yeah, I guess they'd, ha they'd have had... Uh, Viserys would have had to slip something in his drink. Yuzumi yeah. was drinking something yes, over those yes, 41 yes, yes. days, or he would have not made it that long. So in comparison with the television show, the cloud watching is skipped. But the book gift and the subsequent biblioclasm, I looked up a word, McKelly, biblioclasm. Oh, that wow. means the destruction of books, biblioclasm. Okay. Uh, they, they very much happen. Uh, Tyrion has the line about every king should read it, not Uncle Kevin. Uh, more, I think it's more impactful with Kevin. I do too. Or, or in some ways, it's kind of more hidden by coming from Kevin, but it, it should have had a bigger effect on Joffrey. They did. Right. Third party so, opinion. Yeah. But then when, when Tyrion gives the gift, unbelievably, Joffrey says the words, now that the war is won, we should all find time for wisdom. Thank you, uncle. Nah. -uh. Uh -huh. And like, wow. he, he did it sort of glancing round towards his mother and grandfather. And they You're were like, like uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> this is what I'm supposed to say, right? Right. <clears throat> Tyrion and Sansa both do a sort of simultaneous narrowing of the eyes when he says this, like, what ha. is he up to? Uh, I really like that touch, actually. I thought I thought it was, it sort of hinted at Tywin imposing a bit of discipline on the king and also makes the moment where he reverts to Ty all the more satisfying, you know, because... Sure, yeah, yes. Comes more out of the blue, you know. Right. Uh, he gets the sword. His true colors are revealed. He also reveals the provenance of the sword when he says, every time I use it, I will. it will be like cutting Ned Stark's head off all over again. Oh, how lovely. Yes. And uh, there's no mention of the MacGuffin dagger at this point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what a MacGuffin is? Not off the top of my head. It's it's a it's a it's an item used in literature or movies which has got real value to the people involved, but oh. to the reader doesn't necessarily have the real value. So so I think the sort of classic examples are the Maltese Falcon and also right. the um, the 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 briefcase in Pulp Fiction. Oh, we never know yes. what's in there, but it's right. it's, it's a MacGuffin. The the one ring in Lord of the Rings is also considered that, but it, but it's m more central to the plot. That one, it, yes, it's, right, it's usually right, right. central to the plot, but actually useless. You know what I mean? Just a thing oh, okay. that sort of motivates the characters. So the dagger yes. is sort of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like it. Good, good lesson there. <laughs> All of it. All right, pedantry corner. All right, only one thing for me in pedantry this time, but how? the hell are we going to get a wedding in at <laughs> noon after this kind of lavish breakfast? Baylor's Sept is on the other side of town. Does the Sept have parking for 500 litters? <laughs> a thousand guests are tra tra tracing up that hill. It's a logistical nightmare. There's no it way. It really is. Yeah. Yes. That's a problem. Yeah. That is a if, problem. If there was no breakfast, sure. Everyone can take their time and get up there by noon. Yeah. But this breakfast... Unless this breakfast was at like six thirty, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, I wonder about parking. You bring up a good point about parking. And and also, you've just come from quite of a lavish breakfast. You've eaten a lot, maybe some coffee. Where's the bathrooms? Oh yes, a thousand yeah. people arrived desperately for to pee. Oh, I mean, like... with well, with coffee, poop. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I can't do is laugh. It makes me, it, it yeah. ignites a coughing fit. So this has you, been quite the struggle. You've come to the right place. <clears throat> yeah, so we, we need a much more serious show here. It's, it's the uh, key. All right, news and notes. 
Thanks for your patience while we took our vacations. They were most welcome. And I, 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 I hate seeing his face slightly less. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but i do like making him cough <laughs> i i feel the love hopefully i got that cough edited out ah uh, yes how that that is does uh that is our love language right there yeah <laughs> and, and we have a new uh b max sustainer a new buy me a coffee sustainer um someone is the name of the person they joined our yes night of the realm yes yes someone um, so it, well welcome someone we are yes. grateful for your uh support yes thank you very much someone i look forward to interacting with you and uh yeah it's it's awesome thank you so very much and uh we got a review from uh pa- pajazet pajazet, pajazet. Yeah. from podchaser.com uh, it goes like this love listening to this while working and before bed to get more background information on the lore and world as well as refreshing up on the previous books while i read the newer ones the hosts are knowledgeable give good summaries and relevant background information on the characters and world on top of that this is genuinely one of the funniest podcasts i've read now i came across this uh, review while i was waiting to start the uh game of thrones trivia game oh so, that's uh, perfect you you so now I have was, a certificate I, to say yes we are knowledgeable Yes. And I read this part about being genuinely one of the funniest podcasts ever. I'll just read the next line as well. The hosts are hilarious and managed to make me laugh every episode. Now, I read that to my loving wife who rolled her eyes and I'm pretty sure disagreed pretty yeah. significantly with yeah, that uh, yeah. opinion. But I don't care because he, that's not the opinion that I'm focusing on right now. Just that is the one who said it. Right. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the last episode I listened to had a debate on whether or not Westeros had invented zippers on pants because in the show, a character did the motion with shaking off after relieving himself. <laughs> I believe that was all you, which uh, <laughs> is still one of the funnier moments. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember what motivated that, really. I mean, I remember, I remember having the conversation. Uh, uh, we do go off on tangents. Yes, we, that we do. I'm still catching up on the podcast, but from what I've seen, they always listen to feedback and apply it. They've even started uploading to YouTube because someone requested it that we do. Uh, must listen to if you are a fan of the world of A Song of Ice and Fire. Thank you guys for making this podcast. Thank you, Patches. That's terrific. That, is, that, that, was, is. that was really nice to read. I, I, yes. I got a warm glow. Uh, but let's right. conclude. Uh, Joffrey's no Prince Charming, but did he have something to do with the assassination of Bran? If so, why? Uh, yeah. I, it seems strange to jump to this conclusion. Unless, I mean, unless Cersei told him to do it. You know, you, did you like that little kid who fell out of the thing? Nah, not much, Mum. Well, why don't you kill him? Well, right. Here's a yes. dagger. Yeah, uh, it it isn't a lot to go on. You're right. Mm. I mean, it's not like he said, oh, I'm very familiar with Valerian steel. I once gave a guy a Valerian <laughs> steel dagger. <laughs> Cat's poor, Winterfell, yeah. and <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Maybe if he had mentioned all that, it would be a little more clear. But uh-huh. you know, I mean, Bran, uh, Tyrion is is an astute observer. Yeah. So maybe he's picking up on something that we missed. There's astute observation, and then there's extrapolation to weird conclusions, and it just feels right. a bit strong to me. But I tell you what I've noticed is there's a recurring theme of people avoiding bonding with those who reach out to them. So Sansa with Tyrion is an example uh-huh. here, but also Tyrion with Oberyn. Oberyn Martell is clearly willing to be friend Tyrion to a certain point. He definitely yeah, wants he... what he wants, but Tyrion's kind of like cuts him off and doesn't really. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so Oberyn comes over and shares the pain of the loss of that book he, they, they kind of commiserate he he gives them commiseration about i i saw a copy of that book once yeah, at yeah. The citadel yeah. it was beautiful it was amazing and Tyrion does is kind of gruff and curt with him and a third example of this maybe is is joffrey with Tyrion. i mean the book was a chance it was an opportunity to build a bridge and mend sure mend some of the fences but uh their interests, I mean, th- those pairs of characters, their interests do overlap <laughs> imperfectly, but they do overlap. And But the olive branches keep getting spurned and right. no progress yes. is made. No, not on any of these fronts. 
And, and I, certainly not between Sansa and Tyrion. I mean, no, you mentioned that's, that, that's but the one. Uh, you know, yeah, they they really could be good together if they allowed themselves. If 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 Sansa would would accept the olive branch that Tyrion keeps reaching out with. Yeah, but, it's like uh, they're doing a very formal dance with each other when they just need to get their disco on. You know, right? Yes, get their disco on. <laughs> yeah. It's strange to have a chapter with of Sansa without any furtherance of the get out of here with the drunken Sodontus plot. Is she cooling on that idea? Or did you f- spot the, the reference when she said it was coming to her head and the wedding day is the day? Right. It yeah, makes for excitement. Yeah. But but you know what? The thing is, the thing about the, reading these books is what happens is you're going to move away from this to some other point of view and you're not going to find out what happens at the wedding. Where are we going next, McKelly? Oh, uh, we're staying right here. We're jumping back to Tyrion. Oh, well, in that case, <laughs> fingers crossed for Sedantus not getting drunk at the wedding. Right. Yes. Of all the times, it might, you know, might be a good time for him to skip the drink uh-huh. at this particular feast. So that'll be three yeah. in a row for Westeros' happiest couple. That's right. And yeah. we have a wedding to look forward to. And you We've... know we love a wedding. Well, nothing we're ever sure. goes wrong. No, nothing ever goes wrong. It's... Yeah. It's uh, it's all rainbows and unicorns for sure. <laughs> well, there's four ways that you can help us. You could leave us a positive le- review like Pajazette did. You could buy merchandise at ghostsofharrenhall.threadless.com. You could buy us a cup of arbor gold at buymeacoffee.com slash ghostsharrenhall. Become a sustainer at the Lord Paramount on Night of the Realm level and have your name read out on the podcast and have our eternal gratitude. Or you can just Absolutely. make a donation directly at ghostsofharrenhall.buzzsprout.com. And if you're looking for more ways to interact with us, uh, keeping up on the latest Ghost of Heron Hall news and developments, well, check us out on our social medias. You can follow us on Twitter, at Ghost Heron Hall. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Discord, and YouTube. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye. Bye.